Hi, and welcome back to our series Backgammon Basics here on Drag the Bar. I'm Bill Roberti, your instructor for the series. Now, last time in episode three, we saw how to play the different opening roles. We looked at not only the moves themselves, but also the ideas behind them. Every opening move initiates a particular game plan. And if you know the plan, you know what you're trying to do and what the best way is to follow up. Now, in this episode, we're going to take a look at a game which illustrates a type of plan known as the Blitz. In a Blitz, one side goes for a quick knockout, trying to hit and close his board before his opponent can recover and establish a defensive anchor. When a Blitz succeeds, it leads to a quick, overwhelming advantage and usually the win of a Gammon, scoring four points. When it fails, the defender gets an edge because the attacker has moved his checkers too far forward too quickly. Blitzes are really exciting games where the outcome swings on every roll of the dice. The defender is always ready to take the advantage with a lucky shot, but if the defender rolls poorly, he gets crushed. Okay, let's get started. Now our sample game starts with White winning the opening roll. He rolls a six and a three. And as we saw in the previous lesson, there are a couple of different ways to play this. White chooses to make a straight running move. He moves one of his back checkers six to go to the bar, and then he keeps it going and ends up stopping on the 10 point. That's perfectly okay. It's a simple way of playing the game. It tends to lead to a little less complicated positions than the alternative, which was to stop on the bar with a six and play the three down. That's a move that leads to a more complicated game. But there's nothing wrong with the play White made. He tries to run his check route. He hopes that he doesn't get hit. Perfectly okay. Now it's Black's turn. And Black replies with a roll that we uh, haven't seen too much so far, double fives. And that's a, that's a role he can play very strongly in this position. Um, now, he's got a simple way of playing it. Some players, if they're not aware of the power of a blitz, might just do this. They might just take two checkers from their midpoint and play them all the way down to their three point. Perfectly okay move, nothing wrong with it. It makes a point, it uses the full value of the roll, but black can do better. And what he can do instead is, first of all, to make his three point from his eight point with two checkers, like that. And then he can take two checkers from his six point, move them all the way down to the one point, hitting white, putting white on the bar. So in one roll, black goes from a one-point board to a three-point board. He gets some distribution of checkers, makes some good points, puts white on the bar, and puts the pressure on white to respond. Okay, now it's white's turn. White needs to come in on from the bar, and he shoots, but he rolls a 6-6. Six, six. Now, normally, 6-6 six, six is a pretty good roll uh, during the game. It moves a lot of freight around the board. Sometimes it mets, makes you, lets you make new good points. But unfortunately, if you're on the bar, 6-6 six, six is always blocked because your opponent has his 6-point. So, unfortunately, White needs to come in on the 6-point. He can't do it. So he loses his turn, and he stays on the bar. So the advantage right away has swung around to black. Black has attacked White, he's put him on the bar, and now White, unfortunately, has danced on this three-point board. And Black doesn't waste any time taking advantage of his edge. He takes the cube, he turns it to two, and he puts the question to White, do you want to finish this game, or do you want to give up and surrender a point right now? Well, Black has the advantage, but it's not an overwhelming advantage yet. Sure, he's got threats. If he rolls a three next turn, he'll hit white, put a second checker on the bar. He's got some other rolls like 4-2 and 6-4 that'll make another inner board point. So black definitely has some threats in the position. And of course, white hasn't accomplished very much himself. Now, sometimes players get scared here and they just give up. They say, oh, I can see that I might get closed out here. I might get gammoned. I'm going to give up a point. But that's definitely a mistake. This is a well-understood position, and the right thing for White to do here is to simply take the cube 
and see if he can pull this game out. It's not that hard to do, although it's true that black does have a real gammon threat here. Anyway, white makes the correct play, he accepts the cube, and the game goes on. So with the cube now on white's side, it's black's turn to roll, and he shoots, and he rolls a great shot, 4-3. That's actually one of his best numbers. And here's how he plays it. He starts off by playing the 3, and he moves a 3 from his midpoint down to his 10 point, hitting white in the process. So white goes up on the bar, black plays his 3 down. Now with the 4, black has a couple of choices. He could split his back men with the 4, that's not a bad play. But when you're conducting a blitz, what you need most of all is a lot of checkers bearing on the points in your inner board because your goal is to close your board as quickly as possible and hopefully keep white trapped on the bar while that's happening. And if you do that, you're going to win a gammon. If white gets the time to enter his checkers and anchor up, then the game can swing around in his favor. But black's first, first need here is to really get some builders in position so he's ready to make his four point, his five point, maybe even his two point. So with the four, he makes the right play playing another checker down from the midpoint to the nine point. Now he's got four different builders aiming at his inner board. He's got a lot of threats to make a point next turn. Okay, now it's White's turn. He sh he's going to roll the dice. He needs a five, a four, or a two to get one or both of his men in from the bar. That's his only goal right now. Try to get in from the bar and somehow make a defensive point in Black's inner board. So he shoots and he throws not a bad number, a 4-3. He can't enter with the 3 because black owns the 3 point, but he can get in with the 4. So he takes that option, brings his checker in to black's 4 point, and at least he started the process of getting in off the bar. Okay, now it's black's turn, and black shoots and rolls a 6-3. Now, ideally, he would like to have rolled a number like 6-5, 6-4, 5-4, 4-2. He had a lot of different numbers which would actually have made the four point on white's head. Unfortunately, he didn't roll one of those numbers. His aces and his threes aren't that good for him here, but he can use the roll effectively. What he does is he's going to take a checker from the 10 point down to the four point and hit white, put white back on the bar, and then with the three, he's just going to bring down another builder. Again, he's keeping up the pressure. He's attacking white, putting him on the bar, basically forcing white to throw a good number to try to survive. Okay, so now it's white's turn. Again, he needs a five, a four, or a deuce to get in. He'd really like a four because that would let him come in and hit black. That could save the game for him. Um, so he shoots. But unfortunately, he rolls one of his bad numbers again. He rolls 6-3, and the 6-point is blocked. The 3-point is blocked. There's no way he can play his number, so he can't come in. He stays on the bar yet again. Okay, now it's Black's turn. Black has so many good rolls here, we can barely count them. He can cover his blot with any 6, 5, 4, or deuce, so he's an enormous favorite. In fact, I think all 36 of his numbers probably cover this point. And let's see what he shoots. He shoots and he rolls a 4-1. Well, that's not too hard to play. Uh, with the 4, he's going to move from the 8 to the 4 point covering. And with the ace, he has a couple of choices. He could move from 9 to 8. But instead, he elects to play 24-23, which is a good, sh a good roll. He's splitting his back men with a roll that doesn't really do much for the attack. And that's going to enable him to get his back men out more easily in the future when he needs to do that. Now, he's not going to play with his back men very much for a while because his first job is to try to close white out. But there's no harm in getting them moving when there's a little lull in the action. So that's what he's up to here. Now it's white's turn again. <clears throat> he shoots. And he rolls a 5-1. That's a little better than what he's been throwing for a while. At least it lets him get a checker in. So he, move, he uses the 5 to bring one checker in from the bar. And of course he can't play the ace because black owns the ace point. But still, it's a start. He got a checker in at least. Okay, now it's black's turn. And black shoots and rolls a 4-2 this time. 
Now the four is pretty easy. Uh, he's going to keep up the attack and play his checker from the nine point down to the five point, which will put white on the bar yet again. And with a two, he's just going to bring down another builder within direct range of the five point. So he plays a checker from 13 to 11. Now he can cover this blot next turn with a six from the 11 point, a five from the 10 point, and a one from the six point. So if white doesn't roll a five, black's going to be a huge favorite to make that five point. Okay, white's turn again. And he shoots, and again, he gets a checker in. He rolls a 3-2. The two-point is open, so white can play one checker into the two-point. Again, the threes are blocked because black owns the three-point. So white's struggling, but if he can just make an anchor somewhere, he can still pull this game out. But time is starting to run out on him because black is probably going to make a five-point board next turn. Okay, now it's black's turn. And black rolls a 5-3. And here he makes a very interesting play. Um, notice that he could use the 5 to play from 10 to 5, making a 5-point board. But the problem with that is that if white then rolled a deuce, he'd anchor up on the 23-point. That might save a gammon for him. It might even let him turn the game around at a later point. Black really wants a closeout. He really wants to complete a full board and put white on the bar with two men so that white can never be a threat again. And to pursue that end, he's going to use the three to move from five to two, putting white back on the bar, and then use the five to play down from 13 to eight, giving him another cover number for the two point. He'll then have sixes and fours to cover the blot on the two. So black is really putting all his effort into making sure that white can't anchor anywhere. And in fact, he thinks that that goal is so important that he's willing to pass up making the five point for a turn or two. Okay, white's turn again. He'd really like a two. He'd really like a five. But unfortunately, he rolls a four three. The four points covered, the three points covered. So white is stuck on the bar again. And now black shoots. And black rolls 6-1. <clears throat> That's a good shot. Uh, he could make his 5-point. He could play 11-5 to five and 6-5. to five, But that would leave a blot on the 2, which white could hit. Uh, instead, he makes a better play. He uses the 6 to cover the 2 from the 8-point. And with the 1, he plays in back from 23 to 22. Um, there was no strong reason to do that, but he didn't have anything better to do over here. He has three checkers aimed at his five point. The checker on the 11, which needs a six to get there. Checker on the 10 needs a five to get there. Checker on the six needs a one to get there. So he's got as much firepower bearing on, on the five point as he possibly can. And that means it's time now to get the back men moving around the board while he waits for a chance to make the five. Uh, if white stays on the bar with two men, black will just either make the five point if he can, or if he can't, he'll just keep moving his back men up. If white enters on the five point with one man, then black will certainly hit him. Okay, white's turn, and this time white rolls a 4-1, and we've seen this story before. The four point's covered, the one point is covered, white can't enter, he has to stay on the bar. And now it's Black's turn. Obviously, Black wants some combination of a 6, a 5, and a 1 that would let him close the 5 point. And he shoots. Unfortunately, he gets a 4-3. Not his best, but he just starts the back checkers moving, uses the 4 to come up to the 18, and then uses the 3 to keep it going. And hopefully next turn, if he has to, he'll bring this checker around and get a 4th builder aiming at his 5 point. Okay, now white's on roll. As you can see, he's going to need some fives pretty quickly here, or he's going to be closed out rapidly. He shoots and gets a 6-5. Not a bad roll. At least he gets to bring one checker in, and uh, with a little luck here, maybe he can get that second one in and turn the game around. Now black shoots, and unfortunately for black, he throws about his worst number, a 4-3, which doesn't let him hit with any combination. 
So he's really just got to prepare for next turn and face the fact that if white does enter, he's going to have a little bit of a difficult time getting home without leaving a bunch of shots. He plays the four around, making the 11 point, which is good. If white does stay out, uh, that'll give him a few extra rolls to close the five point. And with the three, he starts the back checker moving. Uh, if white does manage to get in, it's very important that black's rear checkers get as far into the outfield as they can because from that point on he's going to have to dodge a lot of bullets trying to get home. Now White shoots again. Uh, he desperately needs a 5 but comes up 6-4 and with the 6 point and the 4 point blocked once again he stays on the bar. And now it's Black's turn and this time Black rolls slightly better than before. He rolls a 6-4. With a 6 clearly he's going to keep the attack going and hit white from 11 to 5. So he does that. And then he's got to look around for the best 4. Now he doesn't want to pick up the blot. He could shift it down to the 1 point, but remember his goal here is to complete the closeout, not to leave the 5 point open and give white constant possibilities of getting in and causing him some trouble. So he's going to leave the point slotted as we say and try to and hope that white doesn't roll a five and then black will have a pretty easy time covering it and completing the shutout. So with the four he'd ideally like to move his back checker but notice the back checker is blocked from moving four because white owns the 17 point. So instead he just plays 11 to seven keeping three builders in position. That gives him three cover numbers to make the five point next turn. Any five, any two, any one provided, of course, that white stays on the bar. And now it's white's turn. White rolls, but he only throws a 2-1, which is no good. The two point and the one point are both made, so white is stuck on the bar for another. And now black shoots, and of course he needs any five, any two, any one to finish the closeout. Unfortunately, he throws another 4-3, one of the few numbers now that wouldn't let him finish the closeout but at least he can keep the back checker going. He moves that first three and then four. So the back checker is now getting within range of his home board. And again, he's hoping white doesn't roll a five and maybe he can finish the closeout next turn. White shoots, still needs a five. This time he comes up with the wrong five, three, two. That doesn't do him any good. The three point and the two point are both blocked. So again, he stays on the bar and he's now rapidly running out of time. And now Black fires again, as before. He needs a 5, a 2, and a 1. And he's actually also picked up a, an extra cover number from the 14 point. And fortunately for him, that checker is there because he rolls a 6-3, which doesn't cover with any of these checkers, but he can move the checker on the 14 point all the way, get it to the 8 point, and then to the 5 point. And now the closeout's complete. White can't even roll here. He's stuck on the bar and it looks like it's going to be a gammon for black, but let's see how the game finishes up. Black shoots again. White can't move since the whole board is closed, and this time black rolls a 5-4. Pretty good number. Now black's goal here is to try to bear his checkers in in such a way that he doesn't have any numbers at all that will leave a blot next turn. And the best way to play the 5-4 is to play from 10 to 5 and from 7 to 3. Now the number you want to look at here when you're bearing in is, is double 6 next turn. If you can play the role in such a way that a, a future double 6 from you is going to play safely, then you've probably made the safest play possible, or at least one of the safest. And if you look here, uh, if black rolls a double 6 from this position, he's going to take three checkers off the 6 point, then one checker off the five point, it'll be a safe play and he'll have a safe formation left. So this is a good play of the five four. Now with white stuck on the bar, it's still black's turn, so he rolls again. And this time he rolls a six one, again a pretty good number. With the six, he'll take a checker off the six point. And with the one, again, he's gonna use some caution. He looks ahead and sees that with five checkers on the total of the five and the six points. If he rolls double six from this position, he'll end up leaving a blot. The last checker on the five point will be exposed. 
So to make sure that doesn't happen, he uses the one to play five to four. Now if he rolls double six next, he'll take two checkers off the six, two off the five, and he'll be safe. Okay, the board's still closed, so once again, it's still black who's going to roll. And this time he rolls a 4-2, and that's another interesting shot. <clears throat> now he could keep his board closed here. He could play 4 off and 3-1. to one. Not a bad play, but it entails a certain amount of risk. Uh, let's take a look at why this play might be risky. If black plays 4 off and 3-1 to one, creates a position like this, Take a look at what happens, for instance, if his next roll is a 6-1. In that case, he'd have to take a checker off the 6, play 6-5. to five. That would be a pretty dangerous position because he'd now be exposed to rolls like double 6, double 5, double 4, 6-5, six 6-4. Six All those numbers would leave a shot next turn. So Black wants to avoid that if he possibly can. And instead... Instead, with the 4-2 to play from this position, he just clears the 6-point. He plays 6-4, to 6-2. to two. That leaves him in a completely safe position, and it's a position that's very likely to re remain safe for several turns. And notice what he's also doing here. He's, by opening up the 6-point, he's allowing white to come in behind him. Now, that's good because at this point, he doesn't need to keep white on the bar any longer in order to win a gammon. As long as he can allow white to enter, come in behind him, once white enters, there's no danger that white will ever hit a shot as black tries to complete the bear off. And yet with so many checkers in the outer board, white is still probably going to get gammon. So this is a sa safe play and a good play. Okay, now finally it's white's turn. He can shoot again. He rolls. He rolls a 5-4, but the 5 and the 4 point are still closed, so once again he's stuck on the bar. Okay, now it's Black's turn again, and this time he fires out a 4-2, and he continues with the idea that he had last turn. Rather than be in a hurry to bear off checkers, which he doesn't really need to do anymore because White is so far behind, he can't really save the gammon without an extreme fluke. Uh, Black again chooses the safest play with the 4-2. He plays a checker from the 5 to the 3, a checker from the 5 to the 1, now he's opened up two points here for White to come in, and in this way he's allowing White to enter behind him and get him out of his hair so that he can't possibly lose the game with a fluke hit later on. And now White shoots, and this time White rolls a number that allows him to enter. Uh, he's not really happy about entering, but he wouldn't be all that happy staying on the bar either. The point here is that there's very little he can do to there's nothing he can really do to win the game, and there's very little he can do to save a gammon unless he manages to fire out three or four huge doubles after he gets his checkers in. Okay, now Black shoots, fires out a 4-4, and that's a pretty good shot. It takes all four checkers off the four point. And that pretty much wraps up the game. Let's just go through the finish here so you can see what happened. Uh, white... Fire to 1-1. One, one. Again, with the one point occupied, white stays on the bar. Then black shoots a 3-2. Not bad. He takes a checker off the three point. And with the two, he continues to play a little safe by playing 3-1, to one, which leaves fewer shots next turn than if he'd taken a checker off the two point. White rolls a 4-1. And that allows him to enter with the four. And with the one, he just keeps his checkers moving, but there's not much he can do now. Black rolls. It's a one one. And like a, like a couple of turns ago with the double fours, that enables him to take four checkers off the one point. Notice he's no longer concerned about safety since white has now entered behind him. There's no further contact in the game. There's no way white can hit a checker. So now it's just a case of bearing off his checkers as quickly as possible. Uh, white rolls a 6-2. That's actually not a bad shot in that it gets both checkers out of black's inner board so that now, if worse comes to worse, at least white won't lose a backgammon, which would happen if he got a checker caught in black's home board when white would black bore off all the checkers. And finally, 
Black wraps things up with a quick 6-6. Six, six. That takes two checkers off the three point, two checkers off the two point, leaves him with just one checker left, which he'll bear off next turn. No matter what white does, he can't save a gammon here. So the game is over. Black wins four points, finishes off a successful blitz. Okay, now let's recap what we just saw. Black took an early lead with a quick set of double fives and put white ch white's checker up on the bar. Once white danced, black turned the cube immediately. He realized that there were now a lot of variations that gave him an overwhelming advantage, and he wanted to get the cube moving before that happened. White's take was perfectly correct. There were a lot of ways black's plan could fail, and white was not going to let himself get bluffed out. Good for him. But unfortunately, Black was able to put two checkers up on the bar, and from that point on, White could never roll well enough to make the defensive anchor that might have turned the game around. Now, for his part, Black played very well, demonstrated excellent technique in taking just enough risk to keep the attack going until he was able to close the board, and we saw just how long that actually took. Once the board was closed, Black was a huge favorite to win a gammon. He just needed to play accurately enough to avoid exposing a checker to a shot. But nothing went wrong in the bear off and Black scored a well-deserved four points. Now we can ask, could White have done anything differently? And the answer is no, not really. Uh, he was correct to take the double. And after that, his moves, as we saw, were pretty much forced. The dice and his opponent's accurate play really determined the outcome. If this were poker, we'd call this a cooler. Uh, there's nothing to be done, you just move on to the next game, except that it was just a case of bad luck. But this was a very instructive game, however, because opportunities to blitz your opponent will arise frequently, and many times the people you're playing will overlook these possibilities, so make sure you don't. Play the game through a second time and notice how relentlessly Black aimed for the closeout and how he took maximum advantage of his good dice. Now also remember, for online backgammon, try the site Black Chip Poker, which is part of the Merge Network. They accept American players, and you can sign up through the My Account page here on Drag the Bar. And don't forget to sign up for Rakeback when you join. Now, next time we'll go back to the early stage of the game and take a look at how to reply to the opening moves. Once your opponent wins the opening roll, he starts with an advantage, and your job is then to neutralize it without taking too many chances. In the next episode, I'll give you some ideas on how that's done. Until then, this is Bill Roberti signing off for Drag the Bar.